Hello, I'm not great at introductions, so I'm just going to read out uh, the article from the London Times that I want to reference and then um, comment afterwards. It's not very long, so please bear with me. This is from uh, today's London Times. Britons are too lazy, boss told her Reese Desi Trust report. Kathy's supervisor has been described as one of the company's worst bosses after telling a would-be employee that British staff were unreliable, Jeff Morgan writes. Julian Preston Power, 53, who is married to the owner of Intense Works West and Hove, I believe that's either in East Westminster or West, I can't remember, um, said that employees called in sick would have their wages from a previous shift withheld. He made the suggestion, which would be illegal, after a woman was made late for a training shift by public transport delays. Victoria Atkins, 22, had passed an interview, but would she ask to rearrange Mr. Press and Powers replied by text? Sorry you are having a stressful morning. It's probably better you did not succeed in getting the job because you can never be late for or miss work at our business, ever. You cannot e ever even call in sick as that is not allowed. Literally, you have to be at work as scheduled with us, and if you do not, you get a whole day's wages from your previous shift dock, and then are sacked if it happens just once again. We are British, but generally cannot ever manage to hire British due to poor work, work ethics. Mr. Press and Powers praised an employee who had not had a day off in three years because that was normal for thin, healthy people who don't eat bacon. Miss Atkins said she was particularly offended by um, the implication that she had a poor diet. She added, I understand why he didn't let me do another shift, but his comments about British people having no work ethic were shocking. When approached for comment, Mr. Press and Powers repeated his view that the very poorest type of employee is a British one full stop. He claimed that he withheld wages from workers who called in sick because he gave double pay to those who filled in at short notice. He said the legal position is that you can self-certify, but we work outside that. We specifically use policies that are beneficial to small, small businesses. We have a policy that if you don't show up for work for whatever reason, the entire previous shift will be docked from your wages unless you can provide a doctor's note to prove you're too sick to work. What British people do specifically is they really take advantage of the fact they have a benefit system and they're not motivated to earn money. The Trade Union Congress noted that Britain's put in some of the longest hours in Europe. A spokesman said if he's looking for the title of Britain's worst boss, it sounds like he's going about it the right way. Um, okay, there's a lot of talking points with this. First of all, uh, I'm going to be absolutely blunt. Um, Julian, what's the name here? Julian Press and Pars, what a prick. That's how I feel about it. Yeah, no, I'm not going to be diplomatic. I think he's a complete and utter prick. Um, I mean, the young woman's doing herself a favour if she, you know, doesn't try to pursue this. Because I can imagine it's very unpleasant working for this guy. Um, there are so many issues to take uh, with his attitude. Uh, firstly, it's kind of a contradiction. He's saying that the British people have this attitude to a benefit system. But it's kind of a contradiction. But surely if they're applying for work, that contradicts the notion of being lazy. Uh, I mean, he's regurgitating some of the right-wing uh, bigotry towards claimants that you see in the tabloid press. Um, and unfortunately, a lot of people endorse in this country. Having been through the welfare system, I could say a lot of it is misconceptions. But even allowing for the fact there are some who abuse the system, um, you know, what this guy is doing is generalising millions of his fellow Britons as being lazy. I mean, how obnoxious for him to make a judgment about this young woman having a poor diet. How the hell does he know that? I mean, who is he, an Olympian? Um, it's, a, it's a disgusting attitude. Um, I've heard this before from certain British employers that um, perhaps people from Eastern Europe or Central Europe are harder workers. Um, 
we were the world's first industrialized country. Britain has many hard workers. Now, if he has had a bad track record with British staff, I could sort of understand them being reluctant to hire British staff, but it's still, whatever way you look at it, a generalization. And I also think it's grossly unfair to punish this young woman for something that was very clearly beyond her control. I can understand uh, an employer in a small business or any business, you know, um, having a worker that's constantly unreliable, um, you know, letting them go. I can understand that when you've got business to run. But this guy's draconian attitude. Um, I mean, I would like to ask what if he had a family member who was gravely ill and couldn't work in whatever their job was? Maybe then he would show a bit more human compassion and empathy. I mean, you know, is this guy for real? I'm sure there'll be some right wingers who will defend him, but basically, what his attitude comes down to is a very extreme sort of mentality. I mean, he's praising the employee who hasn't had a sick day in three years. That's great. But what if, for example, an employee suddenly has a family death? Um, you know, there's... I can understand, like I say, someone being constantly late, but his absolute zero tolerance attitude to this is, um, strikes me as just callous. And it also makes me think he's a bit of a control freak. As for him docking pay... Or threatening to dock pay well it's illegal but it's also um absolutely shameless i mean if people put in the work they should be paid and if he's taking that away from them i regard that as no better than theft that's the money that they have rightfully earned by labor by putting in work and he's threatening to take that away because they may be late the next time or because they're sick Okay, um, pay them less if they're late, something like that, maybe. But actually taking away money from a previous shift? This guy sounds corrupt as hell. And I really hope his business suffers um, a negative backlash. The fact he doesn't deny it, you know, he was approached for comment, he didn't deny it, he reiterated it. What an arrogant sod. I mean, um, I think there is unfortunately... A number of bosses out there and they have this attitude oh we're a small business so we kind of have this moral credibility not really um if you're treating employees like shit then you know as far as i'm concerned that's abuse of power and it could be a ceo of a massive chain or it could be a small business abuse of power is abuse of power and if you're a boss or a sub boss deputy boss and you're treating employees like that. Um, you know, I'm pleased this has been exposed and I really, really hope there is a backlash. I mean, if I lived in Hove, I'd be, um, well, I wouldn't visit it, but I'm disgusted, to be quite honest, reading about that. But particularly his um, utter lack of any sort of humility and remorse and his total callousness. I mean... There's a big difference between someone who's constantly unreliable and someone who's genuinely sick. I, I would say that, I mean, I've always been suspicious of people who have this mentality of seeking perfection. I mentioned this in my video about education approaches. Well, someone who punishes an employee because they're sick once, and they may be a good employee. They may be a perfectly good barista. They may be professional, polite to customers, and this asshole is going to punish them because they might be genuinely sick on one. What if they get food poisoned? You know, is he going to turn his nose up and say, oh, well, I don't care. Goodbye. You know, he sounds like a callous piece of shit. And I have no problem saying that. I really have contempt for such people. I mean, this sounds to me like a guy who has a smug sense of self-righteousness because he's done reasonably well for himself but you know he sounds like he has absolutely zero human empathy does he even have a heart i mean what a piece of shit i i have no problem saying that because i i know what it's like i've had to put up with bosses like this when i was um when i was a young man when i was 17 i was a waiter and i worked for a very corrupt restaurant 
and the managers there took away the tips. They actually took away the tips from waiters. They argued that tables hadn't been wiped properly, but even if that was the case, what they should have done is kind of reprimanded us to actually take tips away. And I remember at the time they were actually paying me less than what was at that time the legal requirement. My point is there is corruption out there. There are morally bankrupt people who are just greedy. And, you know, he's using this small business thing to kind of make himself look like he's got moral high ground. If you're, if you're abusing staff in that way, if you're abusing employees in that way, um, you know, threatening to take away their wages, even though they've put in the R's, I mean, that's sheer moral corruption. And it's illegal. So, you know, as far as I'm concerned, the police should be investigating this guy and seeing what he's really up to. Um, I do hope there's a backlash. I hope he feels the heat. I hope the business... Frankly, I hope they go out of business. I would have zero sympathy. Then I hope he falls on hard times. I hope he has to sign on. And then maybe, uh, you know, he'll be hit hard in the face, metaphorically speaking, as to what some people have to go through in the real world. You know, because people like Liz, who have a little bit of power, and uh, they use that to abuse others, I, I think it's disgusting. My whole life I've hated that. I've hated that sort of... Um, a, any I hate any abuse of power, but just these petty little people who have a little bit of power over others, and they use that to abuse people. So, I mean, it's kind of ironic. His name is Julian Preston Powers. Clearly, Preston Powers thinks he's some sort of Superman. He never gets sick, you know. Um, he's clearly running a business. Um, well, I wonder, in his 53 years, has he never let anyone down? You know, has he never been affected by transport strikes that are beyond his control? I'd be very, I find that very hard to believe. What a prick. And Julian Preston Powers, if you're watching this, fuck you. I do look down on you. I look down on anyone who uses that position of power to abuse others. I think it's disgusting. And I hope people read this. It's in the national press. I hope people see this. I hope there's a backlash. And I hope your business falls. I really do. Because it's all you deserve.